And today I just want to talk shortly on, hopefully it's shortly, last service wasn't so short. But um, shortly talk about uh, working together with God and four different stages how and when we work with God how we achieve the things that God has um, that, that how do we achieve things that God has put on our heart the dreams goals and desires and um, today is our Sunday breakthrough service so today we're praying for breakthrough we already prayed we're going to continue to pray some more we believe in God for jobs and better jobs we believe in God for promotions we believe, believe in God for new businesses to start for new innovations innovations to be birthed out of this house we're not a ministry that only will attract millionaires but we are mil uh, we're a ministry that will produce millionaires out of this house amen, amen. your man is, is weak so I'll take it for myself amen. if you believe that this ministry will produce millionaires let me hear you shout I receive come on Amen. And so we, we, we are here to work together with God. We're here to empower you and to teach you how to work with God to achieve the things that God has put in your heart. There's people here that you haven't, you haven't wrote the book that God has called you to write yet. There's people that are, that, that are here that you haven't stepped into the fullness of your calling and the anointing that God has for you. There's people that are businessmen and businesswomen are, that are here in this place that have, you have yet to open your business and, st and to step in to the promise that God has for you. There's people here that God has schooling for you. Going through school, getting educated. You will be the first in your family to graduate with a, with a, with a diploma and have, and have a have education, have something that you can be proud of and break that cycle of uh, of poverty and, and 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 low thinking in your in your family and in your in your life and so today I want to talk to you and help you discover how to go through that process together with God and how to step by step work with him to achieve that what God has in store for you amen church and so life someone said this life is a battlefield that only serious minded have a chance at victory that if you want to win if you want to succeed in life, if you want to achieve things in your life, and success is a very uh, relative term. For somebody success would be to make a million dollar a year. For somebody success would be to make fifty thousand dollar a year. So when I say success, when I, when I say achieving your goals and dreams in your future, it will all it will be all relative to what you have and what God has in store, what God has instilled in your heart and for you to achieve it. We're all on different levels. We all have different skills and talents and different callings. But God wants us to, God wants us all to work uh, through those things that God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. And uh, life is not a... Um, Life is not like what we see today in many different schools and, and uh, even in circles of society and um, in some places that we, we, we read online where um, you know they, they hand out participation trophy. Whether you came first or eight you get a trophy and there is nobody, uh, there is no one, uh, no one better uh, and no one worse. But unfortunately life is not that way. Unfortunately life doesn't give you a participation trophy business doesn't give you a participation trophy um life is li life is brutal life is an ex life has a lot of twists and turns life sometimes, life sometimes uh, throws a curveball you get married and you 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 get married with a dream to live happily ever after and then sometimes something happens uh spouse dies you get divorced things happen you're going through hardships and then what do you do then or you open a business you have a dream i'm gonna be i'm gonna be doing this and this and that and you open a business and then you hit a wall and you're facing bankruptcy what do you do then or you you had kids and you of course everybody wants their kids to do this and that and be great and be awesome and then all of a sudden something happens uh, and life take a turn and then you're fighting uh, a battle with with your with your child with your children being addicted or your child being addicted to drugs being living a promiscuous life or, or, or doing different things that you did not see them do so what do you do then what do you how, how do you proceed there how do you fight and what do you how do you how do you work through it and that's today what I want to talk about Anything worth having in life, you have to fight for it. There's nothing free in this life. The, my, my grandpa used to say this. He said that the only thing that is free 
in this life is cheese in a mousetrap. Everything else you have to work for in life. So if a politician or somebody else comes out and says, free this, free that, um, it's a trap. At the end of the day, somebody has to pay for it. Don't be fooled by that, okay? Uh, anyways, there's nothing free in life. I'll give you a story. Um, and I've shared a story some time back, but it's good to refresh. You know, there's one time I decided to buy myself some 15 years ago, decided to buy myself some jeans. And I wanted, I had, I had jeans, uh, but I wanted to buy something nicer, something that fits nice and uh, so that I can wear to a nicer events, uh, to youth service and places like this. And so I decided to go to Buckle. Buckle was cool back then. I don't know if it's cool now or not, but it was cool back then. And I went and picked out a pair of jeans that I really liked and they, they looked nice and they fit very well uh, and better quality, of course, um, as before the holes and stuff like that they had in the jeans. So uh, they, were more, they were more expensive. Nowadays, budget, you know, they cut them out and stuff. But uh, back then, and so 75 bucks, you know, it was just quite a bit of money. You probably could buy back then jeans for 15, 20 bucks at Walmart. Probably still can do that, no? That's Walmart for you. God bless them. That's an awesome storm. And um, so anyways, uh, I, bought, I bought those jeans. They fit nice. And then one time I had to go someplace and uh, I need to be dressed up for it. But I knew that there's probably still that, some work that I have to do and there's a chance of me getting dirty. So I thought like, okay, I want to look nice. But if I do some work there, probably it's going to get dirty. Uh, I don't know if I want to wear those pants. Let me rewind. Missed the spot. Um, shortly after... I bought those jeans. Mom, when I, come, when I come home, my mom was like, hey, my co-worker from my work, uh, her son moved out and she had some spare, she had some clothes that she's giving away because he moved out already. Look through the bag that I brought home from her and see if there's anything that fits you and it fits you, you take it, right? So I go through the bag and I, I find exactly the same jeans that I just bought from Buckle. Even still had a tag on it and my size. Glory to God, I have two pairs of jeans. Thought of returning the other ones, but they have 14 days, uh, you know, can't return it. So anyways, fast forward that now a few months into the, uh, into the future. I'm facing with a dilemma to wear the jeans or not to wear the jeans. Well, I still want to look nice. So guess which jeans I wore? The free ones, not the ones I paid. Why? Because they were free, but they were the same quality. As a matter of fact, they were brand new, just like the other ones. As a matter of fact, they were exactly the same kind, dot for dot. Same. Why? Because anything that we don't pay price for, we don't value. Anything that, anything that we, don't, we, we don't put an effort, that we don't struggle through, we don't value it. <clears throat> because those of us that are healthy and, and we're sitting here, we don't value health until we get sick. Those of us here that <coughs> maybe you're sitting and you know and you have enough to pay bills and some left over you don't value that unless you work hard for it and you uh you struggle through it right that's why if uh, if you watch that documentary which i'll recommend you uh, all of you to watch it it's called the curse of Lotter L lottery and it, it follows people from different uh, different countries and different continents those that won lottery and what happened with them shortly after like some even within a year they burned through all their money and were in a worse state than they were before. Some even committed suicide because of pressure. So that shows that anything that you get for free is we don't value it. We don't value it. And so that's why God wants to not just hand us over things for free. Because God understood, he, designs it. He, he designed us this way. He knows what, who, who, how we made, how we tick. And so that's why God, instead of just handing out things for free, he wants to engage with you and I to work through the process, through the struggle, through the fighting, through the tears, through resistance to develop a character and perseverance and appreciation for the things that God is about to bring in your life. So don't view challenge in your life as God punishing you. Don't view challenge in your life as that you are unlucky, uh, you're unlucky. You were born on the wrong side of the tracks. You came from the wrong side of the family. See it as an opportunity for God to work through you, develop you and help you to achieve the goals and the dreams that he has for you and appreciate and enjoy it. Amen. 
there are two types of struggles in life struggle you can't avoid struggle is something that's part of life whether you are going somewhere whether you're trying to achieve something or whether honestly you just go with the flow just remember first of all only dead fish goes with the flow life fish it, it goes to the destination and a place that it desires but regardless there are struggles in life even if you say you know I'm not ambitious I don't want to have any goals I don't want to have any dreams whether you just because of your disappointments in your life or because of whatever it is but there are struggles in life regardless and the, the first step of struggle is when you struggle in bondage when you struggle in limitation in this bondage you are a slave you confined to your reality, you confined to your limitation, to your background, to your wisdom, to your knowledge, to uh, your resources. And you can only do so much and you still struggle in life. You struggle with not being able to pay the bills, struggling with health, struggling in marriage, struggling in, with children, struggling with uh, an area of your finances, whatever it is. You, you're already struggling and there is the other type of struggling there's a struggle when you're trying to achieve somewhere there's a struggle when you're trying to go pu push forward and achieve something in life to get to your promised land and that's a different type of struggle it's same it's it's still a struggle but it's a different type of struggle and the first one you are a slave confined to your reality in the second one you're a soldier conquering your promised land you have no limits you as far as you're willing to go with God God will use you and how God will take you to the place that you work with him you allow him to work through you so my friends life is a struggle regardless but you must choose to struggle into the direction of your calling you just need to choose to fight in the direction of your uh, into the direction of your passion of your desires your goals and dreams see the two different the, the difference between the first and the second category is that first one struggle mindlessly meaning whatever happens to me I go through it I just kind of flow through it second one as a soldier when you struggle you're being strategic you're being focused you're keeping a dream alive you're being motivated you keep pushing yourself you uh whether to start a business or maybe you're in school you, you got you want to get that degree do you want to get a diploma you're focused you're struggling towards something maybe you you, you uh you're married and things are uh, you know you're in the rocky places right now you can struggle there out of just just because you're miserable or you can struggle towards a better marriage see the difference between the two is one is focused to get out the other one just in self-pity somebody said that um that thinking is hard to do that's why so little people do it think about it thinking is hard to do that's why so little people do it because it requires a mental focus it requ requires a determination it requires planning it requires an effort to go after the things that God has put on your heart the things that you want to achieve in life you gotta you can't just it's easy to be employed and I'm not looking down on employment uh, being employed is a blessing from God but you can be literally mindless doing your job when especially the jobs that require routines like I love working construction you know why because my mind rests when I work construction my body works and I get physically tired but after that I go home I fall asleep and my body rests but owning a construction company and trying to figure out how to manage employees how to manage your subs how to pay the bills how to uh, schedule things ahead how to do this and this and that at the end of the day you come home you want to shut down but your mind keeps working you go to bed you put your head on the pillow you're you're tired as it could be but you can't sleep because your mind won't let you rest so two different struggles but one is going one is stuck in routine other one is achieving something so choose what you struggle with um, stages I want to talk to you about stages of struggle four stages that I've kind of come to identify in my personal life and hopefully maybe you find yourself in a, in, a, in, in in one of those four stages and I can inspire you and I can encourage you to move to the next stage 
and I know there's business people uh, business people in this place I know there's business people watching uh, I know there's people here that maybe just starting maybe there's people here that maybe have troubles in the relationship some of you have already have gone through the struggle in your relationships and you're doing well um, I want to encourage you to go to the next level and so I hope that these four things you can identify yourself in them and you can figure out what can you do next where can you go next together with God because God is willing to give you everything that you're willing to fight for amen first stage um, is a fighting of struggle is when God fights for you it's honestly grace I'm gonna look at the life of Israelites coming out of Egypt so Israelites they were in bondage they cried out to God they had a desire to leave God actually had to they actually were actually comfortable in their in their in their bondage God had to turn up the heat in order for them to begin to desire to leave the bondage and to be free and honestly they had nothing to do with them being free they had nothing to do outside of their own desire and even that was like iffy like halfway in between they're like Moses get out of here we're good you know just leave us alone and so in this first stage is where God fights for you. It's first stage when you get to the bottom of yourself. You don't know where else to go. You don't know where else to turn. And God comes and knocks on your door of your heart. And He says, come to me. And He saves you. And he rescues you. You have nothing to do. It's by His grace. It's by His sovereign will. The only thing that you have to do is desire. Is you have to open your heart. Surrender to God. Listen to His voice. Let Him in. And let Him carry you out. Out of your bondage. Let Him carry you out of, of, of the predicament that you find yourself in this is the stage where God fights for you and I know there's people in here and the people that are watching you you might find yourself on the stage honestly you're hopeless you are at the bot you're at the uh, at the lowest of the low you know you don't even have a strength to fight for yourself I have a good news for you today God will fight for you God will bring you through God will rescue you God will pick you up and he will carry you out out of the bondage that you find yourself in out of that cycle that you can't break out he will he will help you to break that habit that you promised yourself and the people around you and your wife and your parents that you break he will help you he will deliver you and rescue you amen, amen. but there is there is more if you if you find yourself in you know in a situation where you know you're overwhelmed with, overwhelmed with debt overwhelmed with with uh with uh just just not having enough today we're going to be praying and God's going to see you through you're going to get a job we're going to believe for for supernatural debt cancellations we're going to believe for miracle money but this is not where God wants you to be all the rest of your life this is just a rescue stage this is just to to it's like a jump start when the battery is dead and the car can't crank on its own it's like a you put it on you crank it just to get you started. You're going to have to steer the wheel, push the pedals and keep it going after this. But this is the first stage. So oftentimes people get rescued by God. They get saved, they get delivered and they're like, wow, it feels so good. I used to be there, now I'm here. Woo, good. And they settle and they live their life expecting that God will care. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. They receive a prophecy that they're going to be wealthy and they're going to be, they're going to have more than enough. Oh, that's awesome. If God said it, he's going to settle it. He's going to do it. I'm going to sit, watch Netflix, eat Cheetos and God's going to drop a bag of gold on my couch and I'm going to be wealthy. That's not the way it works. Oh, God said God's promise was for me to have be happily married. But you don't read any books. You don't put any effort. You don't work on it. You don't work on yourself. You don't let God deal on it. And you think that just that because you had grace, it for first three months of your marriage that it's gonna go till the end until you die there is gonna be that you're gonna have to switch into the second stage where honestly not the best stage but you have to go through it and that's why I believe there's that's where the majority of the people are it's the stage of fighting to survive every person that embarks on something great every person that starts to work towards the goal and dream their desire their vision that God put in in them will have to go through the stage where you fight to survive where you had a job and 
you started a business and you're excited wow i'm gonna i'm gonna have i'm gonna be my own boss nobody's gonna tell me what to do i'm gonna control my own time i'm in charge of my own uh, uh destiny and you're excited and you start working in it until you realize that you have to look for your own job now until you realize you're the one that has to put everything together and make it work now the bosses doesn't just supply you with job and you came and work from eight to five but you actually have to be the one to make sure things run properly make sure this is paid that is paid make sure government gets a share make sure employees are doing its job and then at the end you like you you feel like you thought you're gonna have more time to spend with your family but you're working twice as much as you used to before you were before you when you were employed you thought you're gonna have more money left in your bank account but in the beginning stages or you you had to invest to into your business to expand it and now you're looking at account you're uh, you got zero on your accounts and you're in debt and this is a stage where a lot of people this is the stage of wilderness this is a stage where Israelites entered into the wilderness this is a stage where many people die this is a stage where the wilderness breaks them instead of being broken by it and then surviving and, and moving out of it into the promised land. This is a stage where oftentimes people in, in marriage, in family, people in, in, in business, people that are pursuing college careers and things like that, they get broken. They, they thought it was would be awesome to be a doctor until they got three years into college and they realized they still got seven to go struggle to survive they start a business and the numbers look great on a paper you open a business and for next three months you can't find a job and you're wondering did God speak to me did I make a mistake should have done it and then even worse you go further and you made, make more mistakes and get yourself even deeper then you start even blaming yourself and there's there a struggle internal struggles there's this there's this fight for survival there's this fight to try to stay afloat and that's the part that's the stage that everybody in life in every area of your life will have to go through i just want to encourage you that in that stage you don't give up i want to encourage you that in that stage you trust god and trust the process see in the first stage all you have to do is have a desire and God rescued you all you have to do is just run up to God and say yes Lord I receive into my heart yes Lord I'm gonna embark on this yes Lord I'm gonna start doing this the first stage was easy it's supernatural it's almost like God gives you grace for it but there comes a season where your yes will have to follow up with some with some grind with some grit with some character with some effort with some struggle and some fight and that's the stage that's it's it's a, it's a weird stage because you left the known and now you 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 left the comfortable and known and now you're in in the unknown you thought you knew you were going but when you ended up in desert you're like where am I going now you question everything about yourself you question things about your prophecies you question things about your calling you question whether you even anointed or whether you even you, whether you should even be doing what you're doing that's the stage of fighting for survival but I want to tell you that even in this stage God doesn't leave you to your own strength if you look at Israelites when they walked around the mountain for 40 years walking to the promised land every battle God helped them supernaturally Bible says that the nations around them feared Israel when they were coming nearby them. I want to tell you that even though you're going to have to, Joshua, you're going to have to go and fight. But I want to tell you that Moses is lifting his hands up on the mountain and you're getting supernatural victory. You will get through each process, each step. In this, in this, in this stage, you will have to learn how to trust the process and trust God. This is the stage is where you get purified like gold by trials and tribulation. This is a stage where God begins to remove impurities. This is a stage where God begins to remove the old types of thinking. This is a stage a lot of times the, the, the biggest battle on this stage is internal. This is where God begins to work on, in you and begins to develop a soldier and he begins to remove slave out of you. Amen. Nehemiah in the Bible also had a dream to rebuild Israel they were in captivity for many years and then finally they were returned uh, Jer Jer 
Jerusalem. He was, had a dream to rebuild Jerusalem, that's right. Uh, and Nehemiah, he was serving King's palace. He was good, he was set. And now all of a sudden Nehemiah gets this idea, gets this dream, gets this burning desire to go build, help rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He leaves his comfort, he leaves his known he, and he goes on to the unknown and he tries to unite people. He tries, he tries to rebuild the walls of, 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 of Jerusalem and he's struggling because he's getting attacked. And this stage fighting for survival what often the reason why this stage is so difficult because you have to do two things at the same time in one hand you have to build in another hand you have to fight in one hand you have to grind and put hours physical hours and sweat and thinking and strategizing and working and plowing and just 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 working tirelessly and on the other side you're fighting what if what if this is not it what is what if I married the wrong person? What if he's not the one? What if this business will fail? What if this contract is not going to come through? And you're fighting internally while you're exhausted externally. That's why this stage is hard. But I want to encourage you. You will build a wall. You will fortify your city. You will build an empire. You will build a legacy. You will achieve your goals and your dreams. It will cost you everything but you will get there and the bigger the dream the more you're gonna have to put in the longer it will take you to go through it but if you don't give up halfway if you don't quit if you don't break if you don't back back down you will see how God will take you to the other side and you will treasure and value what, you, what God will give you on the other side you will not walk around prideful and arrogant you will not walk around with uh, with your nose up look what I did but you will walk in humility you will walk in gladness knowing that if we wouldn't be for God I would have died there but now I'm standing as a witness unto God and you would treasure it you will value it you will be thankful to God for it you will not whine and complain like those people that left uh, left Egypt and were whining and complaining in the desert you will become positive you will become grateful and you will be a person of, of humility if you don't break during the process, uh, pro process but you bend and work together with God. Amen. This process is very necessary but it is a process of fighting for survival. The next step, next stage of fighting. It's a stage of fighting in the promised land. There are people here in this place that uh, in your life, uh, in your marriage, you turn the corner. Honestly, you're not maybe exactly where you want to be but things are good. You know there's peace there's harmony yeah, there's still some disagreements here there but you kind of went through your grind you, you 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 worked out a lot of issues and you are you are starting to catch traction you're starting to get ground I want to tell you that this season is a tricky one seems like every season is tricky but this one is tricky one you don't survive on this one can trick you and it's kind of like that's life for you but in this season there's a temptation to settle for a little bit in this season there is temptation to settle on this side of the Jordan God gave a vast amount of land as a promise to Israel and he said you go and take that land it's all yours but I want to tell you that God will give you only as much as you're willing to fight for the temptation in this season is because listen the prior season you exhausted yourself the prior season you fought mentally and physically and the temptation in this season and you, the temptation is to come into this season tired come in worn out fought for your marriage for 10 years finally it's 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 getting traction but you depleted and you're tired and honestly you don't even want it anymore that's why one of the one of the biggest uh, the statistic I, I don't I don't know the exact numbers but the statistic goes something like this that after couples survive a uh, big um, like a like maybe terminal illness like cancer or this and that and after some years of fighting they just by the end they end up in being divorced because you think they'll get closer but it's because they're just depleted and exhausted by the end of it there is in this season there is a there is a part where you can 
where, where you can get exhausted and come into the season not like Joshua and Caleb when they walked around the mountain for 40 years and when they came back they he, Caleb said to Joshua give me that mountain I am strong as the young as I, I'm as uh, I have the, the youth in me and I, my strength is as when I was young give me that mountain I'm gonna go conquer to maintain that attitude, to maintain that strength, to maintain that um, this vigorousness about yourself and, and this kind of attacking life with a fresh, fresh new zeal, it can die in the previous season. And I want to warn you and I want to caution you about this, this season. That if you start catching some ground in your business, don't start settling, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep going further finally hire you finally kind of start making some money start thinking bigger something you can further ahead start investing start setting aside start hiring employees start working toward bigger greater future start working towards what God has in store for you it, same same in your in, in your in your marriage in your family in the moment you start catching some ground the moment, the moment you start you start, start gaining some ground it's not a moment to give up and relax it's the moment to renew your strength in the Lord and continue to fight let me give you two distinct stories Israel God gives him this vast land that you that now is as is um, Iraq Iran and Afghanistan all these all, all these areas there and but Israelites they settled for the little piece that you see now as Israel today that's all they've gotten but the promise was so much more and because they did not fight to the fullness of what God had in store for them they their children continue to fight to fight after them until this day it's been thousands of years Israel is still fighting the wars that should have been won with the Joshua's generation or the, the generation after that let me give you another story in the Bible David David was a, val a man of valor he was a he had a fighting spirit in it. I think that's why God liked him so much despite of his mistakes. He fought. He fought. The Bible says he fought all his life and there came one moment where David he was Bible says when there was time for kings to go to war David stayed back because he fought all his life. I can only imagine he's older now you know his strength maybe not as much as he used to be but Bible says it was time for kings to go to war and he didn't and in that time that he decided to kind of stay back and, and and not fight he committed adultery that followed with killing another and taking innocent man's life which if you compare David to before a, a warrior David he was guilty for the fact that he cut a robe of Saul and now a man that's not fighting was willing to kill an innocent man fighting is a not fighting is decept is deceptive settling for less than what God has in store for you is deceptive uh, but David quickly realized his mistake and recovered and he continued to fight as long as he had strength and Bible says Solomon saw time of peace and prosperity I want to tell you today that everything you're fighting for today don't just think today don't just think now don't just think for myself think for your next generation think think about your children think about your grandchildren think about a stage that you're setting up for others in your uh, for others in your life for your next generation because the demons that you don't fight today your sons and daughters will have to face them tomorrow but the victories that you will that you will acquire today will be a stage that your children will stand upon and they will go further and conquer more for Jesus Christ. Amen. I just want to encourage you that don't settle for less, less than what God has in store for you. If you're tired, if you're exhausted, we're going to pray today. We're going to believe that God's going to renew your strength and you will soar on the winds like eagles. The Bible says you will run and you will not get weary. Don't get settled 
for a little that you got don't get settled for a little promotion that you got if what if God has put on your heart to be a, ma a manager or for God has put in your heart to own your own company or God has put in, in your heart to do some great exploits for God if God put on your heart to be in the ministry and doing great things for God don't settle for a little bit and begin to manage it continue to conquer more and more for God in your business in your marriage in your family in your career in your education and the last stage is the stage of dominion it's a place where you fight in the promised land this is a stage where you where you dominate this is where you capture your market share this is where people know who you are when your name is mentioned in the city where you are forced to be reckoned with where you are a giant in the land where you take over completely what God has in store for you where you build that platform that foundation not only for yourself but you set an example for the next generation how to fight and conquer how to how to how to achieve what God has in store for you and how to get what God has in fullness and so I want to encourage you this is dominion is a place where you are not just blessed but you are a blessing this place is not only only where your marriage is good and you're experiencing peace and utopia in your marriage but this is place also where you help other marriages to uh, rise up this is a place is not only where you're only free from the addictions from the past and uh, past patterns of thinking but this is a place where you help other drug addicts and uh, other coming out from other addictions this is a place of not only you're a survivor but you are a conqueror more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ where you don't only benefit your life but you benefit the people around you know in my life in, in, in the area of finances and I've shared throughout different sermons and different messages I spoke different stages of fighting in my life uh, it was a struggle for me it was a struggle for me to to make it really every step of the way every business came with a lot of a lot of grinding a lot of hardship a lot of failures a lot of just felt like I was pushing a boulder up the hill and oftentimes the boulder would run me back over and had to start over and you know in 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 this in this struggle it was easy to give up and I'll be honest with you many times I give up but because of God because of his strength was able to pick myself back up and to move forward and year after year after year after year continue to push towards the goal and the mark that God had set in store for me and it's only the beginning what I see now but I'm looking as we were looking preparing for um, preparing our taxes for last year and looking through our business and just kind of seeing what God has done in my life and seeing that I not only was able to build what I've built over the last four or five years in business but just seeing that my life has become not only this has not only become a blessing to me but I became a blessing to others and those that are work working for my business and looking through uh, these, these two businesses uh, we have over 30 employees that are employed by the business last year we paid paid out all, over seven hundred thousand dollars in payroll alone and just to see that so many families 30 plus families that are blessed because um i did not give up and i kept pushing forward and kept pushing forward year after year year after year that's not even including all the other businesses and subcontractors that are benefiting from the business that today i have uh and and, and we're doing it so i want to encourage you is that um don't give up keep pushing forward your ministry your calling whatever god has in store for you God will use you not only to bless you God will use those means not only to bless you but for you to be a blessing to others don't give up don't give in don't back down stand firm on God's word stand firm on his promise you will see your family being saved you will see your marriage being restored you will see your children serving Christ you will see how you will finish and be the first one to finish finish college in your generation in your family you will see how you're going to be the first one to own a business and not just to own a business just for the sake of owning a business but you'll be successful in it you will see how God's going to use you in different areas of influence in politics in ministry in in, in an area of art and, and, and music in other places if you don't give up and settle for the little that you got if you don't break through the process if you don't die in the wilderness 
you will get into the promise uh, promised land like Caleb and you're gonna be strong even in your old age you're gonna be courageous you're gonna be a warrior and conqueror for Jesus Christ in Jesus name amen church as the worship team comes to the stage um, we're gonna worship God for a little bit and then we're gonna pray I want you right now as we as we as we sing this song God is able to do whatever you stage you're in in your life you can get up on your feet whatever stage you're in in your life I want to tell you that God is interested in helping you through God is interested in taking you through the situation you've, you're facing is not there to destroy you is there to strengthen you and give glory to God the sickness you're facing is not there to kill you is there to give glory to God and show God who's the healer to you, uh, in your life the struggle and the financial hardship that you're facing right now is not there to bankrupt you but is there to show God's goodness and mercy in your life and take you into the next level right now as we declare that as we sing that just lift your hands and begin to worship him begin to ask him for strength begin to recommit to follow him if you give up pick up that dream the thing that you buried and the thing you give up on and begin to walk after God you will see God will see you through in Jesus name a hand on ourselves and we're going to begin to come to God and say God I surrender my desires my dreams my passion to you let your will be done in my life Lord you place the dreams and desires in my heart and I'm yielding it to you you know the desires of my heart and the path that you have towards me father I surrender to you to be able that your will is accomplished in my life 
Is it maybe, Father, to write books? Is it maybe to be the first one to graduate out of high school? Is it the first one to have the great marriage? Is it the one to be one with the difference in my city, Father? Whatever it may be, I'm surrendering my life, my will and emotions, my strength and my desires to you. Let's begin to pray that right now. Begin to say, Father, sir, do your will in my life. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, let that be accomplished in my life in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Yes, Father, I come before you, Lord, and I ask you, God, I got to surrender myself to you, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, that you will take over, God. God, that you will take over, God, every area of my life. Lord, I hand it over to you, God, and I surrender, God, that my wills, God, will be your will, God, that your will for my life, God, is the only thing, God, that matters, God. I surrender I surrender myself to you, Lord, and I ask you, God, that you will use me, God. When it comes to school, God, I surrender myself to you, Lord. When it comes to my work, Lord, I surrender myself to you, Lord. When it comes to church, Lord, to finances, God, to serve me, Lord, I surrender myself to you, Lord. And I ask you, God, that you will take over, God. God, that you will use me, God, for your glory, God, in every single area of my life, God. Use me for your glory, God, to my family, God, to my friends, God, to the people around me, God. Use me, God, to pray for people, Lord. Use me, God, to deliver people, God, to see healing, God. Father, I surrender every area of my life, God, and I ask you, Lord, God, to use me, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. In church, right now, we're going to pray. I don't know what season of life you are in, but my Bible says God is the God of, of the mountains, and He's the God of the valleys. God didn't, t- God didn't bring you through the season just to abandon you. God wants to see you through. I don't know, maybe you're going through a wilderness. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's in your relationship. But we're going to declare and we're going to speak life into whatever situation we're going through. God said to Ezekiel, do you see this valley of dry bones? Can can these bones live? Ezekiel looked at those bones. He says, Lord, you know. And God says, prophesy to those bones speak life into those bones bones come together again and bone to bone started coming together and there was a large army I want you to start speaking into your situation I want you to start speaking life into your marriage into your business into your career into your desert situation God wants to see you through to see you through in the season of your time I want you I want us to declare declare I will not die I will live and I will testify to the glory of God in my business, in my marriage, in my career, in every area of my life. My God will see me through in this season of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, begin to open up your lips. Begin to speak life into the season of of dryness. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we bring up to you, God, our situations. We bring up to you, God, our issues, God, our family situations. And we speak right now as a church, as a family, God, we speak life into it, God. We ask you, God, any dry bones in our marriages, God. Any dry bones in our families, in our businesses, God. In our careers, God. In our spiritual life, God. I decree, God, that they will rise again, God. God, I decree, God, a a life into them. Lord Jesus, I speak life into our finances. I speak life into our health. I speak life into every area that is dead. Lord Jesus, let your light begin to shine in every area, God, that is down. Lord Jesus, we lift it up to your hands, God. We know, God, not by my God, not by power, God, but it's by your spirit, God. It is by your spirit. It is by your grace, God. It is by your power, God, that the dry bones can live again, Lord Jesus. We bring it up to you, God. We ask you, God, do you begin to bless every area of our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Right now, we're gonna, it's a breakthrough Sunday, so we're going to be praying for our financial needs. I want to pray, since we had a testimony, and I believe your faith is lifted up, uh, about you moving in into your own house. It's great to live on rent, and it's awesome to pay off somebody else's property, but it's better when you're paying for your own, and it's your own house and your own home. Amen? So if you're here in this place, and you believe in God to have your own house this year, lift your hand and we're going to pray with you come on now if you believe in God to be in your own house this year 
We believe God of miracles. God will open opportunities. You'll have to go to the bank. You're gonna have to go and get pre-approved. You're gonna have, you might have to get a little creative. You might have to do something out. Uh, you, you, you will have to do the work, but God will open the door. All it takes is a desire. Okay. If you want to move in to your own house, lift your hands. And those of you that are watching online, if you believe in God to move into your own house right now, this year, just stretch your hands towards the screen. We're gonna pray in Jesus' name. We're gonna release God's power. We're going to release God's anointing right now to work on your behalf in Jesus' name. Father, we release your power in Jesus' name. Father, we release your anointing, God. You see your people, God. You said that, Lord, we will live in the houses that we did not build. Right now, God, we claim that promise. We claim that promise for our life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we release homes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we release homes right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, your people, Lord, your, your children, God, will live in their own houses in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, bring forth, God, people our way. Lord, bring forth resources in Jesus' name. Lord, bring things to our, re uh, to, to, to our attention in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, make a way where there is no way. Surprise us this year, God, in Jesus' name. Surprise your people in Jesus' name. Father, we speak, Lord, supernatural speed, God. Supernatural speed, God. Prophetic speed, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In purchase of homes, in the mighty name of Jesus. We release your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus of Jesus Christ in Jesus name right now I want to pray for those that are looking for a job or you're looking for a promotion in your job and I think every every single person that is working should be lifting their hands by now but <coughs> except those that are on church staff <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> if you if you are in need of job, you know, you maybe uh, lost a job or in between jobs or something like that or whatever your case situation might be or you just believe in God for promotion. You've been working for some time, you've been diligent in your work but you're still getting paid the same and you just believe in God for promotion. Lift your hands and we're going to pray. <clears throat> Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we release your grace and your favor. Father, we release your anointing in Jesus' name. We release jobs and opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, this, that these job applications, God, will stand out amongst all of them in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that people that are looking to change jobs to get a better job, so I pray for favor in Jesus' mighty name. Receive your grace. Receive your grace. Receive God's favor in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we release your anointing, God, for jobs. Father, we pray for promotions, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll bring promotions in Jesus' name. Father, that your people will prosper. Father, that your people will become, Lord, self-sustained. I pray, God, that your people will become blessed and will become a blessing in Jesus' name. We release your anointing for jobs in Jesus' name. Those of you that are watching online, just stretch your hands towards the screen if you believe in God for a job or for a better job. Father, we release your anointing. Touch people wherever they are at right now in Jesus' name. Lord, increase in Jesus' name. Bring increase in Jesus' name. Bring jobs and new opportunities in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The last thing I want to pray is for those of you that need a vehicle. Though we live in a country where you need, we need a vehicle to move around. Well, everywhere you need a vehicle to move around. But in other countries, public transportation is a little bit more developed than sometimes here. And so it's always good to have your own vehicle, regardless. And so if you, believe, if you believe in, if your vehicle is struggling, you believe in God for a new vehicle, uh, or if you need a vehicle so you can get, so you can get around, I lift your hands and we're going to pray. And we're going to take this prayer. We, we, we're going to believe God for miracles. We believe, we believe God that God will put things on its right path. And then just because you're going to drive by a, a brand new car dealership after church, don't, don't be claiming that unless you have cash to pay for it. But then I wouldn't even recommend buying brand new cars. But regardless, uh, your grace, your anointing. Um, we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to pray to God that God will use you. Uh, and God will give you a means to get around, to go to work, to come to church, to bring people to church. Amen. How many of you believe that? Come on, just lift your hands and let's pray, church. <laughs> Father, we pray, Lord, for vehicles in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for those, God, that are struggling with their vehicle. God, they have...
they have issues father we pray lord that supernaturally the god that will be fixed in jesus name or god that they will you will supply a, a a new vehicle or newer vehicle in jesus name we pray for those that are watching online we're praying god release a vehicle in jesus name father release god we believe for supernatural miracles god we believe for great deals god on vehicles lord we pray god that the vehicles that we'll purchase next god that will be good vehicles reliable vehicles without problems in jesus name father we release your grace we release your anointing lord release your god angels to work on our behalf in jesus mighty name father we pray for your people god that your people will prosper that your people god will live god in prosperity and abundance and there will be a blessing to the ones that are around us in jesus name father we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your spirit in jesus mighty name be blessed hey this is pastor vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our hungry generation youtube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon thank you for watching and god bless you